Sometimes as an instructor, you're asked to teach subjects you're not completely familiar with. In this series, we plan to seek out masters in those areas and find out the best methods for not only starting students off, but the best pathways for you to explore as a teacher. Today, I'm not a musical theater guy. So, yeah, so Matt. Jeremy. Hey, uh, so I'm not a musical theater drummer. Me either, no. Yeah, right? <laughs> So, um, yeah, so this is something you do, and it's something that, you know, you uh, make a living at. How did you get started doing it? I started in college. Actually, I started in high school, really. Um, I'm, a, mm -hmm. I'm a theater dork, anyway. How, yeah, so how did that, how did one lead to the other? How did you come into, because that was kind of part of it, is like, how do you, you know, where do you find the roots of this? Right, you know? so I loved being on stage. I still mm -hmm. love being on stage. But um, I found when I got to college, I didn't have time to do theater. Um, mm -hmm. I was way better at music than, than acting, mm -hmm. so I went into music, not, not theater. But I found in college that there was an opportunity to start playing community theater shows mm -hmm. um, and actually make a couple dollars, still be around theater, but you know, start actually making a living doing a little mm -hmm. bit of, of percussion work in theater. So that's really kind of where it started was I loved being around theater, I still do, and I found that there was an opportunity and there was a need for people that could do what I did, you know, as far as being orchestral based and able to read and comfortable reading, mm -hmm. but also had some drum set chops, okay. actually, you know, because mm -hmm. every show is different. So. Yeah. That's where that started for me. Okay, so let's take that even a step back then. How did you get started being involved in percussion? How did that, you know, how did you become someone who was both, uh, you know, orchestrally oriented, can do the reading thing, but also, like you said, had some drum set chops? Where did that come um, from? I started in a sixth grade band, like, like a lot of people, um, and um, I had two older brothers that loved, or that did music. Uh, one of them ended up being a music major himself as well, and so I kind of grew up around it, and uh, my parents aren't musically gifted in any way, you know, they supported us, but they mm -hmm. didn't, I didn't come from that. Mm -hmm. um, but from the time I was three, four years old, I used to go to my brother's concerts wanting to sit as close to the percussion as I could, like, okay. I, want, I was that kid that was obsessed mm -hmm. with the percussion, and it wasn't just drum set. Mm -hmm. I would go and, um, I remember um, my middle brother um, played a concert, and I can tell you the piece now, I, I learned when I got older, mm -hmm. was, um, but it was a piece of music where um, a percussionist played a thumb roll. Mm -hmm. And my mind was blown. I had no <laughs> idea what that was. Well, it was like he just did some witchcraft back there. Isn't it fun when you show, show someone that and they're just like, whoa! Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I was maybe seven, eight years old, uh -huh. and I, that caught my eye. And I, yeah. You know, and I ended up playing that piece as a high schooler eventually, mm -hmm. and like I remember piecing that all back together as like, mm -hmm. that's what that was. Okay. And, um, so what piece I, was it? Uh, it was an incantation, incantation and Dance by John, John Barnes Chance. Okay, cool. Uh, fu fun wind ensemble piece, but mm -hmm. I just remember that. And... Uh, the first time I heard a thumb roll, like I said, I, I love drum set, but like I was just drawn to percussion as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, so I started in, as a sixth grader in sixth grade band. Um, I didn't really do any theater through you know middle schoolish anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, I got to high school. Um, a lot of the band kids also did theater, you know, did the musical. So I remember I did my first musical as a sophomore okay. on stage, um, and I found I was decent at it, but I wasn't mm -hmm. anything special. I mean, <laughs> it was fine. It was fun. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. Um, but I was on stage throughout high school, and then. Um, but I would I remember if um, a friend of mine was like the percussionist on the show like during you know rehearsals if they couldn't be there and I wasn't on stage I would jump into the pit for a little bit just as a um, as a challenge to like read some mm -hmm. of their book and fill in okay. some of it um, I remember doing that a couple times for mm -hmm. for some friends of mine so okay cool um, that was kind of where it all started for all right was that your first like foray in a playing drum set was actually doing it in the theater or um, did you do it someplace else I got a drum set when I was uh, in eighth grade Christmas mm -hmm. of my eighth grade year okay. um, and I had no idea what to do with it I wasn't taking lessons. Mm -hmm. Um, that thing probably sat for way longer than it should have. <laughs> I, um, but uh, I mean, I would screw around with it. I, I would listen to, to recordings of like things I thought were cool. Who knows if they really were? And like, I didn't really have any idea what I was doing. I didn't play sure. drums that seriously um, until um, my junior year of high school, mm -hmm. just playing in a jazz band. And even then, um, I was very fortunate. The school I went to, I had some drummers that were older than me that were really, really good, mm -hmm. which allowed me to play. Like in jazz band, I played jazz vibes because I didn't need to play drums. That they were there. And then there was a drummer that's younger than me that's a, a professional um, percussionist now as well, mm -hmm. um, out, out touring on drum set that mm -hmm. was younger than me. So okay. like, I kind of just bridged the gap between everybody that was really good at it. So I, I just filled in. A okay. Lot. Um, I didn't start really playing drum set seriously till um, college. Okay. When did uh, it go from something that was sort of like, I mean, I assume when you started playing, it was, you know, like anything that you build, uh, it goes from being, you know, uh, a gig here or there making some money to being something that, you know, to being something more substantial to eventually being, some, you know, a way that you can make your living. 
throughout college, I, I would fill in. I mean, I would do grab as much work as my schedule would allow. Mm-hmm. Um, it was an easy, it was a good way to make to make some money. You know, it's tough to make money in college anyway. If mm-hmm. you know, as a music major, trying to practice and not putting enough hours in doing that, <laughs> right? Your theory is three weeks behind, and all and all, you you know. So it's just trying to make that all work. But um, you know, after I played a couple shows, the theater world, especially in this area, is all mm-hmm. word of mouth. Mm-hmm. And actually, I'm learning it's all word of mouth outside of this area too. It's right. all about who you know. Mm-hmm. And, and networking and, and being yeah. professional and mm-hmm. presenting yourself professionally right um at all times because you never know where your next gig's coming from i really right. learned that um throughout college mm-hmm. um so as i was getting a gig you know you might go out and have dinner or something after a show and someone's mm-hmm. talking about their next gig. oh i need a percussionist are you available and you you mm-hmm. know you have your calendar and you just and that's really how that business works for right. you know in my experience is just next gig what you know and just communicating and networking mm-hmm. with people right um and i think i found probably about as i was halfway ish through college that I was working pretty regularly. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a good place to be. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think that goes just in any uh, mus- musical setting, it seems to be that the adage of it's um, it's not uh, who you are, it's what you're who you know. People always uh, uh, equate that with Oh, you just get gigs because you know you know people, or like because you schmooze, and it's like no, it's not that. It's it's, it's fifty fifty. You got mm-hmm. you've got to know the right people and make the connection. But right. then when you show up, you got to produce. Right. Um. Mm-hmm. I know I know some players that are really good players that are just kind of jerks and people don't want to work with, so mm-hmm. they don't get as much work. Like, yeah. you want to work with people that are enjoyable, but you want them to play the part and play it <laughs> play it well. Right. Right. Absolutely. Does it feel like you are still, I mean, obviously there's something that we're going to get to that we're talking about anyway, but like, the, does it feel like it's still growing? Does it feel like it's still getting bigger? Yeah, you I like mean, you're working more doing that. Absolutely. I mean, the, the goal mm-hmm. for me is to have at least one show a month. Okay. Um, a mm-hmm. typical show is two to three weeks. Right. Some of the theaters I work, I'm lucky, you know, three to four week runs of mm-hmm. shows. But I mean, I, I, my, my uh, sustainability is built around at least mm-hmm. a show a month. Okay. Um, so, you know, and I don't always hit that. So, I mean, mm-hmm. that that's, that's the goal though, is to... Right. To always have that. It's it's it used to be fun. It still is fun, but it's also that's part of work now. Right, because it's, it's become something you depend upon. Mm-hmm, yeah, right. it's not it's not hobby anymore. I do consider myself a pro- professional percussionist at mm-hmm. some level. <laughs> so you've also done some uh, musical direction. How did you get into that? How did you know? What were the circumstances behind that? Do you like doing that more than playing? You know, I've I've directed. Well, I've uh, directed one show. Um, okay, a musical. Mm-hmm. Um. It was fun. I would never do it again. Okay, all right. Um, I was fortunate that I was still the drummer on that show, so that was mm-hmm. fun. Um, it, it, I'm glad I tried that, and it wasn't for me. Okay. Um, I've been fortunate to co-music direct a uh, musical, um, a really tough musical. Um, and the reason we did that is it's, it was a very percussion-based show. Okay. Um, not only musically, but like a lot of rhythm and hip-hop on stage. Okay. So we wanted somebody mm-hmm. to really be able to focus on, on that side of things mm-hmm. th- throughout rehearsal process. Okay. Um, I worked with a fantastic music director on that um, mm-hmm. who taught me a lot. Um, I was very, very appreciative of that whole experience with them. Mm-hmm. Um, it was also at a time where um, my wife was having a child, so so my life was a little hectic. <laughs> a little, and, little crazy. Um, yeah, a little crazy, but um, things things really went well. Mm-hmm. Um, the show itself was absolutely top notch. Mm-hmm. Um, which the, show was it? It was in the Heights, which okay. is a limit, which is mm-hmm. Manuel Miranda. Um, it was this like pre Hamilton show, if you will. I like right. it better than Hamilton personally, okay. but mm-hmm. um, it just you know it's a very up tempo, modern hip hop based show and mm-hmm. very cool. cool. Um, very fortunate to be part of a really really nice production of it. Mm-hmm. So. Cool. Um, I enjoy music directing. Um, I've found myself conducting a couple times recently. Mm-hmm. Um, usually out of necessity. It's something okay. I'm capable of. Mm-hmm. I don't mind doing right. um, when it makes sense. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm not seeking out conducting gigs. I, right. I like playing, but I'm, I'm very happy to step back and, mm-hmm. and provide you know a conducting role. And right. um, again, that probably comes a lot of my love of the stage side and the, the pit side, mm-hmm. where I can kind of balance those. And I'm right. paying attention to musicians, mm-hmm. but watching. The actors on stage just trying to collaborate and make sure everyone's in, in good position. Mm-hmm. How does that? I've uh, that's the first I've really heard, and it's just because I'm not really in the world. I'm sure it's a, a common thing, but of the person conducting not being the musical director. I always think of that role as being like the kind of <laughs> I am the master of everything here. You right. Know? Um. I mean, it depends on who's who is the music director. Mm-hmm. Um. In my experience, the music director tends to be the person teaching the vocal. Okay. And l- making sure the music's correct. Gotcha. Now, if that's the person conducting, usually it's going to be the person conducting because mm-hmm. as musicians, a lot of us really want that control, mm-hmm. uh, and for good reason. Yeah. But um, I've, I've definitely seen shows where a conductor's brought in for it, or mm-hmm. you know, maybe somebody's teaching vocal, but they're not comfortable with an orchestra in front of mm-hmm. you know. Um, I've, I had that experience this summer where I worked with a mm-hmm. great um, uh, elementary um, 
uh, choir guy. Okay. Does some band, great mm-hmm. musician, um, mm-hmm. but didn't. It, he had some conflicts with scheduling because he was brought in late and wasn't totally comfortable necessarily okay. dealing with the orchestra side of it. He really mm-hmm. wanted to focus on the vocal, mm-hmm. so we kind of worked together on it. And he took care of that because okay. I'm not a piano player as much as I love singing. Mm-hmm. I don't consider myself a vocal. A, a teacher of vocal, mm-hmm. uh, which is why I will never music direct by myself. Okay, <laughs> I, I'm not comfortable teaching vocal lines mm-hmm. and playing piano and doing okay. all that. So, is that why the one that you did is that you know is that kind of where there was maybe some conflict or why you decide that you want to keep away from that now or? Um, I just I, I, I think it has to be the right situation for it to make sense. Okay. Like because you're trying so hard to to be professional, not step on someone else's toes. You know, like mm-hmm. if I'm focused on rhythm, but uh, the other person's focused on vocal. You, you right. want to make sure that you know everybody's getting what they need out of it, and right. just trying to keep everybody happy. And in, in a community theater situation at that, where not everyone's, you know, doing this for a living. You know, if somebody's working as a teacher, you know, half the time they're not worrying about their vocal part. So if they if they forgot something or they forgot a rhythm, you just teach it again. That's all mm-hmm. you can do is just try, you know, try your best with them. So. Yeah. From here, one of the reasons that we decided to do this now is that you know you just landed a a, a, a tour, right? Yes. So okay. yeah, uh, tell us tell us about that. Um, I am going to finish out the last month of the national tour of A Night with Janis Joplin, okay. which was a Broadway musical. Mm-hmm. Um, did a hundred and forty shows ish, I think, off the top of my head. Okay. And they've been out on tour for a while. It's essentially the music of Janis Joplin, mm-hmm. obviously. Um, but it's not just her music. Some of it's about uh, her influences, mm-hmm. um, and kind of her story, which is interesting in, in itself, just because certainly. She died at such a young age, so mm-hmm. it's, you know, for, to fill two and a half hours is quite the story of. It, it, it's it's really it's a lot of fun. It's a really yeah. it's a really cool show. How did that come about? How did how do you land something like that? It's all about that networking in this case. <laughs> okay. um, yeah. I hate to say it, but that's really what it, what is about. Mm-hmm. And um, through Facebook at that. Okay. Um, I'm a member of a Facebook group that's a lot of um, community like theater percussionists is basically mm-hmm. what it is. Um, and it's cool because you get the gamut of people on Broadway every night mm-hmm. all the way down to community theater players and people helping each other out. It's, mm-hmm. it's a really neat community. I think very, very highly of it and the people that are involved. Mm-hmm. Very rarely do you see anyone just being a jerk. Like, right, right. Everyone's really just trying to help each other. And it's really cool if you're playing a show and you have a question about it. Like when I did In the Heights and there was a question about, you know, what what is this instrument? You know, there, there's like 17 shakers on that show. What what, what is a Lizo shaker? And right. so we're able to ask mm-hmm. the original percussionist. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, the orchestrator Alex Lacrimore really liked this sound, <laughs> but Michael doesn't make that anymore. So here's some ideas of some things okay. that you could substitute. Or, yeah, you know, yeah, like, that's awesome. Um, so it's a really neat community. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was fortunate to make a connection with a percussionist on there, um, who is the music director of this tour. Okay. Um, meaning, so he's been the drummer on it as mm-hmm. well. And um, but he's also the music director and drummer on another national tour that's out. And up till okay. now the dates haven't um, conflicted. Okay. So he's been doing both, which is great for him. Right. Um, but it was time to find someone to finish out this leg of the tour. Okay. And uh, I had made that connection. He had my materials and uh, given me the opportunity. That's great. You know, was there any audition process, or was it was there any you know? Um, he, I mean, he, mm-hmm. he's he's got my materials, which means you know he's got some right. clips of me playing uh-huh. a bunch of different stuff. Yeah, yeah. Some video, mm-hmm. um, stuff like that, and then mm-hmm. past that, I mean, some of it is I I think and watch me be wrong about this too. If you watch it, he's gonna watch this video big now. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> just you know the way that I'm able to present myself in that group and answer sure. quite, I I I, I yeah. come across as knowledgeable at least. Right. Uh, <laughs> right. I, um, and just you know confidence in that I do you know mm-hmm. that I'm going to represent him well which is really you know anytime right. a music director hires you especially when they're a drummer themselves uh-huh. Certainly. Um, feel a little bit of extra pressure to make sure I do a nice job for him and right yeah definitely hold, hold down for it you know yeah. what does somebody trying to get into it need to know what does a young student someone that you know and of course part of it is that like everyone finds their way into things right you know so you know young Matt Dudek found his way into something that he likes doing right, right. you know uh, but you know, what are some tips to some people starting? You know, what do they need to know in terms of like actually playing, and what are tips they need to know about being professional and networking and things like that? Um, I think the biggest thing as a player is being well-rounded. Mm-hmm. Um, I will tell people that I'm a good drum set player, but if you need a great drum set player, I can find you someone that's a great drum set player. Mm-hmm. Um, I like to think I'm getting closer to the great drum set <laughs> right, player, yeah. getting there. But like I always, you know, there's always someone that's better than you, and I'm mm-hmm. I'm totally comfortable sure. with with that, right. that f- philosophy. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm well rounded, and that's mm-hmm. what's got me this far in a lot of ways. Um, I'm very comfortable playing mallets, playing accessories, mm-hmm. and you know, making them sound musical, not just mm-hmm. not just hitting a cymbal, but actually playing a suspended cymbal role that does something musically. Right. Or, yeah. Um, part of it, um, in the community theater world especially, is um owning the gear. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Gear gear is is a part of of the game for us. You know, mm-hmm. no one's providing you various things. Like mm-hmm. you've got to be able to have it or 
make it seem like you've got it in some ways. Um, right. I think we've talked about that pre- at one other time in our lives, mm-hmm. like talking about um, some maybe some electronics if you right. if you need to yeah. or whatever you know whatever. S- sampler pad timpani. Uh, I use my iPad actually. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've got a program on iPad that I run mm-hmm. that I have actually tricked a, a very good musician walking in. He thought I had brought timpani in. Okay, yeah. Um, but be, being aware of the gear and mm-hmm. um, you know starting that process, especially mm-hmm. young, um, is is part of the is part of the game and probably one of the harder parts because obviously if you don't have somewhere you can borrow it from, it's not necessarily cheap and right. Um, deal, dealing with that on um, the past couple of years, I've found um, myself playing uh, a lot of mallet stuff on an electronic instrument called the Mallet Cat, and mm-hmm. you know I was very fortunate to get my hands on a Mallet Cat when I did and. It definitely yeah. helps me get more work. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. But yeah, I mean that's that's definitely a, mm-hmm. a part of that game is uh, just mm-hmm. have, having the, the ability to play the books and yeah. um, a lot of the books you know the, the books that are rented for theater um, are generally pretty much the Broadway book or very similar and I mm-hmm. mean they're not gonna skimp out on something just because oh are they gonna have that they're gonna tell you that that's what you need and then mm-hmm. you've got to be able to make that happen in some way. So. Right. Um, what sort of tips as far as like breaking into it? Where do you where do you start? Um, I think a lot of people, if they want to start and know they do, like starting, I mean, every high school does a musical. Make sure mm-hmm. if you, there's a way that to be a part of it as a high schooler, great. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's that networking, finding out who's doing it. Um, mm-hmm. If there's no one in your area doing it, like you don't know any um, musicians doing it, reach out to some local community theaters and be like, mm-hmm. hey, are you guys using live musicians? Mm-hmm. Which is unfortunately a conversation that has to happen. But assuming they <laughs> are, um, you know, is there a music director I could leave some information with? And just mm-hmm. starting to reach out. And then from there, um, if you get that call, trying to kind of get a stranglehold on it like um i always tell people part of the gig is is going out after um mm-hmm. which can be just going to grab a bite you know musicians love to hang out with other musicians and talk shop or mm-hmm. just hang out for a bit and that's that's important um to, to network mm-hmm. and to go you know if you're a young you know you're 17 18 years old go out there and present yourself as older and that's something i had to do is when i was mm-hmm. 18 um i had longer hair than i had now um, I used to, I laugh because I would show up and I remember I, um, my, my drums were in these um, cases that I still use with this fire skull on it, it soft <laughs> cases. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember getting looks from older musicians that have been doing it. I had no idea who mm-hmm. I am. Like, who is this punk? Yeah, yeah, right. And then I pull out like this really nice Gretsch kid out of it. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, we're gonna be okay. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I got you guys. I promise. Like, <laughs> but um, you know, when they don't know you, you just have to present yourself professional and, and make okay. sure that you play well, mm-hmm. that you're. Um, that you're kind to people, you know, mm-hmm. and just, just, and if you're not sure what, how to handle yourself, mm-hmm. watch, watch what other people are doing and just kind of see what, mm-hmm. and every, every theater is going to be different. Every group of people is going to be different, mm-hmm. you know, and figuring out what, what the dynamic is. Okay. Yeah, obviously you're going on the tour. It's about a month long, right? Yep. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. finishing out the last leg of the tour. Okay. So it's about a month. Where's it going to be? Um, I am picking up the tour in San Antonio, Texas. Okay. Um, and then we've got a couple dates in Texas. Mm-hmm. We have to shoot north to Minnesota from Texas. Okay. Um, I, I, from what I have gathered, there was a Minnesota date that was rescheduled for one reason or another. Okay. So they need to go honor honor that date. Uh-huh. Um, grab an Iowa date heading back south mm-hmm. and out west. Uh, some Arizona, some California. Okay. Uh, Colorado in there and Oregon. Okay. So, cool. uh, when's it? Wh- what are the approximate dates? Um, January, I, I'm on tour January 24th ish. Um, mm-hmm. and I don't know, I don't think I'm starting drumming the 24th. I think I get a night or two to, uh-huh. to see the show, make sure that we're good, hopefully get a rehearsal in there before I'm on stage, although that's uh-huh. not guaranteed. So mm-hmm. I might just have to make sure I'm ready to go. But, right. um, J- January 24th through February 18th, I think, is, okay. is the closing date cool. currently. So great. Is there a possibility of it being extended? Does that happen a lot? I, th- or? I think so. Okay. I'm not sure. Yeah. Let's find out. Let's <laughs> yeah, hope yeah. so, right? Right, yeah. Um, I, I, I'd like to hope so. Um, mm-hmm. I know that um, it's been going for a little while now, so mm-hmm. if, if the interest is there, and um, from what I've gathered, houses are still great. Um, mm-hmm. they're, they're doing well. And um, I've gotten to know a couple of cast members through Facebook and uh, other musicians through Facebook a little bit mm-hmm. since I came on, and it seems like a really great pe- group of people really excited to... Uh, get out there and meet everybody cool how many dates about you, know, you said last month but like i haven't counted i want to say it's probably 20 24 days like okay there most, is, most it's, days yeah right? it's pretty much most days and most days are in a new new spot it's okay it's so st- I was, stop stop you know okay yeah i was gonna ask if there was gonna be any like break to pop back home or anything like that not on this one straight out yeah yep mm-hmm. cool great previously they've had that but this one is like i said the last leg it's just mm-hmm. finishing out all those dates yeah cool well, um, love to talk to you again when you get back, kind of get a recap. Sure. Um, thank you so much for oh, like, th- sitting Thanks down for and, having me in. I yeah, appreciate yeah. it. It's great. So, cool. cool. Awesome. All right. Let's hit it.